The Quran begins with the verse Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim begins every surah. Whenever Bismillah used to be recited, it would either, or be, be recited to the Prophet, it would either depict the culmination of a surah or the beginning of a new surah. Now, every chapter has Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim apart from one surah, Toba. And one of the chapters such as Namal has Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim mentioned inside it. So it has Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim at the beginning of the surah and is a part of the surah when Sulaiman writes a letter to Bilqis. However, according to the scholars, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in truth only forms part of one surah and that is the Fatiha, the opening surah. Apart from that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is recited in front of other surahs apart from one as a gesture of a new surah beginning. Hence, whenever we are reading the Quran and we are in the middle of a surah, when we begin it, we may begin by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Had it been a particular part of that surah, we would not begin it with Bismillah ar-Rahman uh, ar-Rahim since it was to be recited in the beginning of the surah and not in the middle. So as far as Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is concerned, it is most accurately, according to the scholars, part of the first surah, Al-Fatiha, and in the rest of the surahs, it is recited as a form of seeking the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is interesting to see how the first verse in the compilation that we have now, which is in accordance with the prophetic instructions as supplied by the hadith of the Ahlul Bayt, that the Prophet had ordained this compilation in his own lifetime. And our scholars by and large agree to this. So it is amazing how the first verse of the divine communication begins with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And it requires certain understanding, reflection, clarification and clarity. It is wonderful to say I begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most kind. But why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begin his work or his revelation with this particular verse? And as far as the merit of this verse is concerned, it is said that, that the great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to Bismillah than the blackness of the pupil is to the pupil itself. So here is what we understand. Before going into the merits of reciting Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, let us just think over why Bismillah is the way in which it is structured. According to Alama Tabatabai, when any work is being done, it is normally attributed and associated to a very prominent personality in order to give that work prominence and in order to give that work, spiritual value. And therefore, when the revelation begins, it begins in the name of Allah. However, it is a tradition of the world as well as the Matabai says. We normally hear in the name of the queen, in the name of the king, so on and so forth. What that means is, I speak with that authority or I besiege you in the name of such and such who is venerated equally by you and by me. Even though I do not have any value, but in the name of the one who has that value as acknowledged by you and is acknowledged by me. There is also a faint possibility that the context in which the Quran was revealed might also be influential in this respect. It is quite possible that the pagans of Mecca may have been using the phrase in the name of Lat, in the name of al uzza in the name of Manat. And therefore in response, since that culture already existed, 
This verse begins in the name of Allah. When we look at the very first verse that was revealed, it says, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Recite in the name of your Lord, the one who created. Not in the name of anyone, but in the name of Allah. So here we find certain merit to what Allah Matabatabai is saying, that whenever a work is given prominence and importance, it is associated with somebody prominent and important. Since this is revelation and nothing can be more prominent than it, it begins in the name of Allah. However, there might be more to it than this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks of his names in several places within the Quran. For example, the ism Allah. This verse is revealed in this way in Surah Namal. Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is from Sulaiman and it is bi ism Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This verse itself shows that bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim precedes the revelation of the Quran as we know it. And it's also quite possible that in the name of Allah may have been the thing that prompted the culture of using the name of venerated personalities to begin important things or to besiege one another or to stress the importance of things. Again, in the case of Nabi Noh, it says, Bismillah majriha wa mursaha. In the name of Allah, sail it. The ship began to sail. Allah also makes reference to his name. Walillah al asma al husna. For Allah are the beautiful names. Fadu'uhu biha. Call him by them. But according to this verse, it means we say, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Allah, Ya Karim. We don't say, Bi ism Allah, Bi ism Rahman, Bi ism Rahim. We say, Ya Rahman, Ya Karim. Ya Khalik, Ya Ghafar, for Allah is saying, for Allah are the beautiful names. Call him by them. But here is the ism Allah, in the name of Allah. When we look further into the names of Allah, we find that these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not just names designating Allah, but are names that are reflecting the presence of Allah instead. And there's a bit of a difference in the way in which we use attributes and the Qur'an uses names for Allah. For example, when we say Zayd is the knower, we say knowledge or Zayd is learned. Knowledge here is an attribution of Zayd. But Zayd is the name of that individual. In the case of Allah, Alim is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which means an attribute of Allah is reflected as a name. There's a bit of a difference as the Orafa and the people, the spiritual masters, explain. What they say is that whatever we see in this world is not Allah, but Allah's handiwork that is being reflected. And everything in this world reflects a facet of the attribute of Allah. And that reflection of the facet of the attribute of Allah is known as the name. So when we see life taking place, we say this is a representation of Allah being Muhyi, the giver of life. And by priority, he is Al-Hayy, the living. Similarly, when we see sustenance being given to one and all and spread, this is the depiction of Razzatiya of Allah. Allah's ability to sustain and hence we call Allah ar and therefore Allah's presence is felt through him giving risk to one and all. Without taking too much time on this, we revert to Bism Allah. So when we say by the name Allah, it can be a simple thing such as in the name of the king in the name of this prophet, in the name of the great one, in the name of the saint. It can be a simple gesture like that, in the name of Allah. 
I start in the name of the only one who has only absolute, decisive, unrestricted authority and all beauty. Of course, if we are going to start something, then it was most befitting to start it in the name of the absolute one, and Allah is the absolute one. Well, why would we say that then? Think about it very carefully. When I say to a thief, in the name of the king, stop, or in the name of the law, stop, I'm imposing certain authority. When I say here, in the name of Allah, then in myself, immediately, whatever I'm going to embark upon, acquires a spiritual property. I become spiritually conscious. True, it becomes a moral marker for me. It becomes a moral compass. Then if I begin in the name of Allah, then it has to be something that is righteous, 